Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, Noel Clark returns to his Signature Hood series for one final time in Brotherhood. Ten years have passed since adulthood and Sam Peel, played by Noel Clark, has left his life behind him and become a family man working multiple jobs. But when his brother Royston, played by Daniel Anthony, is shot, it's clear that someone from Sam's past is out to destroy his family and future. Now Sam must re-enter the street life once more to find out who is responsible and settle things once and for all. Noel Clark is best known internationally for his roles in Doctor Who and Star Trek Into Darkness, but in the UK he's well known as a writer-director in his own right that rose to prominence with the Hood series of films, Kidulthood and Adulthood, and in recent years Clark has tried to move away from those series of films, he's tried to evade typecasting, he's often spoken about how he struggles to get funding for films outside of that particular subgenre, and he did make two attempts recently at genre films he tried his hand at sci-fi with Storage 24 and The Anomaly, which were very much attempts to try and play the Hollywood big-budget blockbuster game on, on the British level and try and break into the American market somewhat. And while I respect his ambition to do that, and I think that's something that really should be celebrated, the movies themselves weren't really all that successful, and in the case of Storage 24, they were very much flops at the box office. So it's understandable why Clark has returned to his signature series for one final outing. I have to admit I hadn't seen any of the Hood movies up until I started preparing for this review and I obviously caught up with them. Kid Old Hood is a really interesting movie. It's this hyper-realist ensemble drama that centers on a group of teenagers in inner city London and how they get caught up in sex, drugs, violence and crime and how they're exploited by many people around them and how it's very easy to get caught up in that world even if you're trying to ignore it. And it very much represented a, a dark, harsh reality that very much resonated with its core audience and Clark wrote the script for that movie but he didn't direct it but he gave himself a supporting role as Sam who is more the antagonist in the first film and the protagonist is a teenage boy named Trife and at the end of that movie Sam fatally strikes Trife with a baseball bat and that one act has major repercussions throughout the entire rest of the series as for my opinions on the film itself, I do think it has a little bit too much of that intent to shock. It feels very much like someone who wants to make a calling card feature. And it is quite ambitious, but at the same time, I did think it, to some extent, inadvertently glamorises that particular life, even though it ultimately wants to criticise it. And to some extent, Clark seems to have taken those criticisms head on when he was creating the sequel, Adulthood, which picks up with Sam, now the protagonist, six years later, coming out of prison and very much wanting to make amends for his past and to try and better himself and put everything behind him. But of course, the past won't let that die. And unfortunately, if he, if he doesn't sort things out, he's going to be dead before the day is out. And Clark picked up the directing duties for the sequel, and you can clearly tell because it's a much more confident, much more assured piece of work. And I, I, I actually really liked the sequel. I liked it a lot more than Kid Hood because it felt a lot more mature and addressing those kind of themes and issues and very much about redemption and repentance. The early scenes in Brotherhood are easily its best ones and that's because it's naturally fascinating to see where these characters are a decade after we last seen them. And in many cases their lives have dramatically changed. Many of them are starting to raise their own families, their mothers and fathers. It's very much come full circle. We started off with them as teenagers and now we see them almost on the cusp of middle age. Noel Clark even gets a few shots at himself uh, as he, you know, mentions how his hairline is receding, I can sympathise, and how his gut is perhaps a little bit further out than he would like it to. And it's very interesting to see how these characters have settled down and 
it very much presents a quite optimistic view of these characters and how it is possible to leave that world behind. It is possible to be older and wiser. You can also still feel very much the ripple effects of everything that's happened from the previous two movies, especially the death of Trife, which still has repercussions on Sam. He's visiting Alyssa, the girlfriend of Trife, and was pregnant in the first movie, gave birth to a, a daughter in adulthood who is now, by this point, almost on the cusp of her own 16th birthday, very much where the characters were at the beginning of kidulthood. And there's something quite poignant about that, that sort of passage of time and the fact that she's grown up without a father and at the same time she's grown up with Sam in her life as this surrogate father figure. There's a scene where Redmond Rao, was Alyssa, tells Clark that someday he is going to have to tell her about his, his role in Trice's death. And that dramatic scene prompts us for something that never actually occurs in the movie. I thought that was disappointing in some level, and it's one of many missed opportunities that Brotherhood unfortunately represents as it continues. This is very much Clark's baby, which is completely understandable given that he writes, directs, stars, and produces it. Unfortunately, the script that he's written lets the side down. The problem with Brotherhood is that I just wasn't convinced of what was happening on screen, and this happens on a number of different levels with this particular movie. The first is with the story itself. The revenge movie plot of Sam going after these people that are targeting him and his family, it doesn't feel like it comes from the streets, it feels like it's cut from a sort of movie cloth. But I could, you know, get past that if it wasn't for the plotting itself. The problem is that the plotting relies on a lot of characters acting in ways that are completely illogical and the movie is full of holes and very ill-thought-out decisions on their part, and to some extent that's understandable, but it feels like there's a lot of there's a lot of decision-making here that feels purely designed to facilitate the plot. If characters didn't act the way they do, this movie would be over in five minutes, because the film starts with this gang going into this nightclub, making very concerted efforts to try and hide their identity. They've covered the security cameras and things like that. Yet at the same time, they leave at the crime scene an envelope that is addressed to Sam that contains a letter that has their address on it that goes right to their hideout, right where they're doing illegal activity. So if the police intercepted that and opened up the letter which says, we're not done yet, and very much gives a motive for the crime, they would very much have a warrant to go right in there and this movie would be over. But of course, the film doesn't do that because... Henry, played by Arnold Osing, picks up the envelope for reasons that are never entirely explained. I don't know why he does this. He takes the, the envelope away from the crime scene and takes it back to his house so that he can show Sam the envelope later. And you think, why, why did he do that? What, why? So he shows the envelope to Sam. And this all, this all happens in the first ten minutes of the movie. And he sees the address on the back of it. And he knows it's a trap, and you, th and you think to yourself, okay, so the next thing he would do is take this obvious bit of evidence back to the police so that they can, you know, do this investigation into his brother's shooting. No, he's going to go after it himself. Clearly that is the most sensible option he could have taken at this point. Clark does himself no favours when it comes to the characters of Sam, because, again, early on in this movie we establish that Sam has become a family man, he's raising two kids, and yet, in the first ten minutes of the movie, a woman comes up to him who is obviously intent on seducing him, and he recognises this, and is obviously trying to coax him back to her apartment, which he does for some reason because the plot says so, and then she strips off with the clear pretext of getting him to have an affair, and he recognises that, goes to the door, sees her, you know, on the sofa, and then thinks better of it and decides to do it anyway. And the moment this happens you think, hmm, I wonder if this will come back to bite him at some point in the movie. And of course it does, because it's been completely engineered to be that way. 
And it's n it doesn't feel natural for the character to do this. It feels like there is a series of increasingly wrong-headed decisions and how the character just ignores all these blatantly obvious red flags to the audience. And it really makes you not sympathise with Sam and his whole situation with his family that comes as a direct result of this particular action. And it's a shame because in terms of Clark's performance, this is easily the best he's given in the series. He's very much a confident, assured actor by this point that is very much He's very much able to show that barely suppressed inner rage in the character and how he's torn between being this honest man and the bad man that he used to be. This violent side that he has to get in touch with if he's going to rid himself of this entire thing. There's a lot of scenes that showcase Clark's performance naturally. There's a lot of moments where he smashes things out of sheer frustration. And while he's somewhat out of touch, there is still that, that side of him that is still somewhat intimidating, that there is still some level of threat to him and in terms of Clark's direction this is easily the best that he's directed a film to date there is a real slick stylish quality to the production that is a leap ahead of the previous two films that were very low budget and very grainy you can tell that right from the outset with the opening club sequence which is very much uses a lot of stylish cross-cutting and effects and there are moments where Clark uses the sound in particular to, to really emphasise Sam's lowest moments. The problem is that although there has been a real leap in the production value here, unfortunately it takes away a lot of the grit of the film, it makes it feel like it's less a part of that particular world unfortunately, and in general the film has less of immediacy than its two predecessors. The two previous films were both set in a 24 hour period, and yes there was some contrivances about the fact that it, that so much happened within the time span of those movies, but I didn't really mind that because, by contrast, Brotherhood has a much longer time span, but it feels at times lethargic. It felt like the movie dragged. It really felt like the movie was lacking in any kind of real momentum, which is not what you want to have in the final installment of a trilogy when it's trying to wrap itself up. The big issue with the film, though, that many people have pointed out is the way that it depicts the issue of sex slavery, human trafficking, which is very much what the villains are involved in. And unfortunately, the way that the film depicts this is very, very poorly done. Because it's... The way it comes across on screen, it may not be Clark's intention, but the way that it comes across on screen is that it feels like we have a bunch of completely nude women walking around a set dressing. It feels like... It feels like it's gratuitous. Why is there simply a room full of completely naked women? It feels very salacious and unnecessary. And it's, and it's dehum dehumanising. And I know that's by intention, but it reduces these them to the level of props because none of them have any kind of characters or any kind of dialogue. All they do is stand in the background of scenes completely naked or occasionally they'll be, they'll be engaging in a sex act. That's most of what these characters do. I'm not going to accuse Clark of being misogynist. I don't think he's trying to be misogynist. There are female characters that are much better written. For example, within that very same group of villains, you have Poppy, who is tr challenging that sort of internal misogyny that very much characterises that kind of culture. And yet, it stands in stark contrast to all these nude women in the frame. And Brotherhood is this very uneasy contrast of things that Clark is attempting to do that, that is counteracted by other things that happen in the movie. When it comes to the villains themselves, again, they lack that kind of authenticity. They feel a little bit erring on the side of mockney gangster figures. Which is a shame, because I like the idea in concept that in the, in the time that's, that Sam has been away from this world, things have really progressed. It's not people hiding in these low, in these, in the bottom of someone's apartment, but the characters themselves, they border a little bit on caricature. And this especially goes for Jason Mazza as the main villain. He feels like he's a little bit of a stereotype, and he doesn't come across as quite of a threatening figure as the film really wants him to be. 
On the other hand, you have a character like Hugs, who is nicknamed for the fact that he likes to embrace people and then stab them in the side. And to some extent, while that is a little bit of a pantomime villain, it's quite well performed, and he's really memorable in the past. He's a quite sadistic villain, and you really, really look forward to having that character face off against Sam, but the movie doesn't really present that. It feels like it wastes this character, unfortunately. By far the best villain in the movie is Cornell John, reprising his role as Uncle Curtis. He's the series' regular antagonist, and he stretches all the way back to the first film, when he was trying to initiate his nephew Trife into his gang, and ever since Trife's death, has been trying to avenge him by killing Sam. And... John manages to cut a very memorable and intimidating figure as he has done across this entire series of films and he actually has the, his biggest role across the entire series in this movie and it's been very well earned and the movie is very much building towards this confrontation between these two characters that have been in all three of these movies now and it, it feels satisfying when, when those two are on screen, sharing screen time together. The movie is really at its best in those moments. And you really wish the movie ha had concentrated more on that, rather than having all these other villains and this sex slavery angle that it doesn't really feel prepared to commit to. Ultimately, this is by far the weakest of any of the Hood movies. However, with that being said, if you are a fan of the series, you will probably want to still check this one out because you will want to see where the characters end up. And those final moments with the characters in those last few minutes, they are satisfying if you have seen all three of these movies. Clark knows exactly where he wants to take these characters and he knows what ending he wants to give them. And Yes, it's a little bit too neat. Yes, it's a little bit too pat. But if you follow their journeys, you, that won't be so much of an issue for you. That I think ultimately you will be satisfied with what Clark has done for the characters at the end of the day. I just wish that the movie leading up to that point was a better one. Brotherhood is a disappointing end to Noel Clark's trilogy that lacks the grit and potency of the earlier efforts. Although it's by far the slickest entry, it's also the one that feels least grounded in reality, ending up as a revenge movie that feels quite implausible, especially since the film relies on characters making dumb decisions to further the plot. Clark directs and performs the lead role solely, but it's his script that's to blame, falling into cliches and alternates between questioning the street life style and using vicious violence and nude women as set dressing. Like the main character, it's torn between maturity and being set in its ways. And while hardcore fans of the series will be happy with its tidy resolution, this feels like a step backwards for the multi-talented Clark. Coming up soon we set sail with Swallows and Amazons, we find out if Breaking the Bank is a bust, and we meet the girl with all the gifts in a zombie outbreak. But until then, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out. The only person more dangerous than someone with nothing to lose is someone who stands to lose everything.